We've been told, and you've probably heard this too, I, I grew up hearing this, this idea that heroes are ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I bet you've heard that too. And what I've learned through this hero effect journey from studying hundreds of companies and, and looking at the great performers and, and world-class achievers is I think we've had it wrong. I think we've had it wrong this whole time. And where I've landed on this idea and why this message has resonated with so many different companies is that heroes are extraordinary people who show up every day and choose not to be ordinary. You know, I've given this speech hundreds of times and it's never been the same. I never give the same speech twice. There's core content that is that is central to the message. There are principles and, and, and ideas that I share with every audience, but every speech is different. With the theme and the outcomes and the takeaways that the meeting planners and the owners and the, the senior leadership of these organizations, it's what they want to have happen. It's not forcing my message into their meeting but rather tailoring my message to support their meeting. I sat down with them and I had my yellow pad out and I said, what would you like for me to talk about? They said, we're not really sure, but we want it to be different. We don't want the same old stock speech. We don't want to hear the leadership vision and communication stuff. We want to honor these people. They're really, really good at what they do and they work really, really hard to serve our customers. We want to remind them that what they do matters. In fact, a lot of our customers look at this group of people and they consider them to be heroes. And the hero effect is about a strategy. It's about a strategy for showing up every single day and helping people with no strings attached. It's about creating an exceptional experience for the people you serve at work and at home. It's about taking 100% responsibility for your attitude, your actions, and your results every single time. You see, heroes don't get caught up in who made the mistake or why does this circumstance exist. They focus squarely all the time on creating the best possible outcome for the people they serve. And the last thing I've learned about heroes is that they see life very differently. They see life through the lens of optimism. They see people not as they are, but as they can be. They see situations not as it is, but as it should be. Any Disney fans in the room? Disney is a magical place. It's magical because when you go there, your money disappears. <laughs> that is the magic. To tell you this story, I'm going to introduce you to my son. His name is Josh Brown. If you met him, he would tell you his name is Josh Brown. He thinks it's hyphenated all one word. Josh has autism. We've known that since he was a little bitty guy. When he was seven years old, he discovered Walt Disney World. And if you know anything at all about autism, you know when these kids get something on their brain, it's the only thing that exists in the whole wide world. For two years, this kid obsessed about Disney. They drew my boy in. They had him hook, line, and sinker. When he got to the Disney boat, they didn't need a net. The boy jumped in the boat. For two years, Dad, I want to go to Disney. Dad, please, 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 when are we going to Disney? We waited until he was nine years old. We wanted to make sure he could enjoy the trip and it wasn't so overwhelming for me. We packed our bags, we had our list, we took off. We got to Orlando four hours ahead of our luggage. Bright and early the next morning we got up. I said, Josh Brown, where are we eating breakfast? He said, Dad, we're eating in this hotel, we're gonna ease you into it. No lines, no trams. Smart boy, knows his father very well. We head out, and I'm gonna make a confession to you. I told Lisa that I wouldn't work on this trip. I did not promise her that I wouldn't pay attention to what's happening at Disney. I'm in the people business. My clients are in the people business. I'm at the customer experience mecca of the entire world. I want to know how do they do what they do? How do they draw you in and make you feel special? Create magic over and over again. How do they get so much money out of your wallet and make you feel good about it? <laughs> Radar's up. I'm paying attention. Down the escalators, we get to the restaurant. Hostess greets us with a giant smile. Welcome, Brown family. We're so glad that you're here. We have a table just for you. I'm making mental notes. Giant smile. It's a brilliant way to start. Brown family, we love the sound of our own name, don't we? Table just for us, how special is that? Takes us to our table, hands us menus, takes two steps back and says, Brown family, may I be the first to wish you a magical day? <laughs> you people. <laughs> she leaves, the waitress comes over, waitress has no expression. Waitress looks a little bit ticked off. She comes over and looks at Lisa and says, can I get you something to drink? And Lisa says, you can, but I need to tell you, my son's on a very special diet. Lots he can have, lots that he can't have. And before she could say another word, the waitress put her hand in Lisa's face and said, ma'am, I need to stop you right there. I'm not going to be able to take your order. You're going to need to speak to the executive chef. And she disappeared. And now I'm ticked off. I have a boatload of money wrapped up in this trip. I have a few expectations. Smiling is one of them. If you could whistle while you work, I'd greatly appreciate that a lot. 
from the back of the room, from the back of the restaurant. The executive chef, easy to spot, big white coat, giant chef boy, RD hat. She comes out, she looks right at Josh Brown. She says, good morning, sunshine, how are you? He lowered his head and said, good morning, he's really shy. She said, my name is B. I understand somebody's on a special diet. How can I help? She takes a notebook out. She starts writing down everything Lisa says he can have and everything that he can't. Then she starts asking questions. What's in that? I've never heard of that. How do you get, where do you make that? I don't understand. How about this? What's his favorite? She gets done. She puts her notebook away. She says, okay, sunshine, what's for breakfast? Apple pancakes, please. It's his favorite. She said, sunshine, I'm so sorry. I don't have the ingredients. Mom told me how to make them, but I don't have the stuff. How about some bacon and eggs and some special toast? He nodded. She left. Miss Personality came back and took the rest of our order. We ate. We left. We were completely satisfied. There's an important point I want to make about being satisfied. A great friend of mine, her name is Kelly Swanson. She says, nobody notices normal. Nobody notices normal. Nobody notices when the members and partners you serve are satisfied. Satisfaction doesn't even get you a ticket to the dance. People at home, they don't care about being satisfied. Listen to me. Satisfaction is what every organization on the planet is chasing. Don't you want enthusiastic ambassadors for your brand? Satisfaction doesn't get you a ticket to the dance. Think about this for a minute. When was the last time you went to a fast food restaurant, got your food, raced home, kicked open the door and said, baby, you're not going to believe it, but today, finally got it my way. <laughs> Day two at Disney. Josh Brown, where are we eating breakfast? Dad, I want to go see Aunt B. Who? <laughs> I looked at Lisa and she said, B, the executive chef, B-E-A. He said, Dad, I want to go see Aunt B. I said, brother, we've got a spreadsheet. He said, Dad, I want to go see Aunt B. Guess where we went? Okay, we're on our way. Down the escalators, we have no reservation. We get to the restaurant. Hostess greets us with the same giant smile. Welcome back, Brown family. No reservation, no problem. We have a table just for you. I'm sure you do. Takes us to the exact same table we were at the day before. Guess who's working our section? And she still hadn't got the memo. I mean, you would think, I mean, she saw that it was us, didn't even come to the table. She went to the back of the restaurant. And I'm thinking, surely during orientation, somebody told her she works at the happiest place on earth. From the back of the restaurant, Aunt B. She comes out, making a beeline to our table. She says, good morning, sunshine, to which I promptly said, good morning. She said, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> morning, sunshine, what's for breakfast? Apple pancakes, please. You got it, baby, coming right up. Oh, t t time out, Aunt B. Do you remember us from yesterday? Yes, sir, I do. Aunt B, yesterday you didn't, sir, why are you calling me Aunt B? <laughs> it's a fair question. Sorry, family thing. B, yesterday you didn't have the stuff. True. Today you do? Yes. Where did you get it? The store. So you sent someone to the store? No, sir. I stopped on my way home last night. We have them all over Florida. Anybody can go. <laughs> I looked at this woman. I asked her probably the dumbest question I've ever asked anybody in my life, and I've asked a lot. I looked at her, and I said, B, why would you do that? Profound answer. I thought that's what he wanted. Let me make a note. Give the customer or member or partner what they want, whether we serve it or not. Ball game. Guess where we ate every day for eight days. You know, I, I have this belief that, you know, we have to move people to move mountains. And so often, so often in business, we're, we're so focused on moving files and moving paper and moving product and, and doing all of our stuff. And we forget that it's about moving people, moving them from, from where they are to, to someplace better, to someplace new, to, to someplace great, maybe someplace that they didn't even think they could get to. And, you know, one of the greatest joys for me is when, when, when I'm able to make that connection with an audience. And, and, and I'm not like a lot of speakers and, you know, I, I don't use PowerPoint. I don't use flip charts. I, I, I rely on on good old-fashioned communication and connection. I want to use stories that resonate with people about real life. And I think we have to provide an opportunity for them to come into an environment where they can learn and grow and, 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 and laugh a little bit and stretch a little bit and grow a little bit. But more importantly, they go home with ideas and, and tools that help them. And it helps make life a little bit better. It helps make life a little more tolerable and it helps them get from where they are to someplace new. One moment in time has the capacity to change everything. And what I've learned, what I came here to tell you, what I came here to share with you is this journey of a decade that I've been on. What does a hero look like? 
It's not ordinary people doing extraordinary things, not by a long shot. Ladies and gentlemen, heroes are extraordinary people who choose not to be ordinary. You see, what I've learned, ladies and gentlemen, is that ordinary is a choice. Do not ever let it become broke. Do not let it ever become a job. You understand that what you do changes lives in profound ways. And I encourage you to take everything that you squeezed out of this conference and go home and pour it into the people that you serve and serve with. Trust me when I tell you, I believe that's what heroes do. And you'll leave a mark on this planet that cannot be erased. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Brown. Thank you for allowing me to be in your space. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you all so very, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Time is now. The world needs heroes. And more importantly, the world needs your hero. The world needs that extraordinary person that you were created to be to show up every day and bring your best stuff to the present moment and pour it into the lives of others. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Brown and I am so honored that you would consider me as your keynote speaker.